You know what? I just bought a Mesa Boogie 4x12 cab. Yes, another one. I couldn't resist. But this one is not just any Mesa cab. This one is special. I knew that it was from the year 2000, which probably makes it a great sounding cab because the V30s from that year sound really good. But when I came home and opened it up and looked at the serial numbers on the speakers, and when I sent those serial numbers to my friend Adam Nolly Gedgood, who, as you might know from this video here, is a walking Celestian Vintage 30 lexicon, he told me that those speakers were made on the exact same day in January 2000, like the speakers in Andy Sneap's legendary Mesa cab. How cool is that? And that cab has been used on even more legendary records. So today it's time, in this video, it's time to compare this cabinet to my personal favorite, my, my holy grail, or, or my unholy grail, of Mesa cabs and vintage 30s, a cab from 2002 that I've been using for decades and that, that I love very much. So this is the battle of the most amazing sounding Mesa cabs. This is going to be true nerdy fun. Here we go. So I wasn't really searching for a cabinet like this. I was mainly searching for any used Mesa 4x12, but of course it's a nice bonus to get a, a cab from a good sounding year. The main idea was to get a cab for speaker experiments. So I'm gonna take out those speakers, I'm gonna slaughter the holy cow, and I'm gonna do some speaker experiments in the upcoming weeks. But before that, we will check it out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out all four speakers that cabinet i will tell you why in a second and compare them to my favorite v30 in the cabinet from 2002. here's the setup that we're playing i haven't even dialed in the tone i think the tone we're using uh is is the tone one of the tones that i used for the harakiri for the sky album that i'm mixing at the moment and this is a tube screamer into a frayette pitbull synergy module into the power amp of my brunetti extra lead and i can switch between both cabinets i even have a cool midi switcher here so i can do that with my foot isn't that cool so we're going to start with the reference which is the vintage 30 inside the cabinet from 2002. <laughs> And this is, if you ask me, this is how a great Vintage 30 is supposed to sound. I might be a little biased because I'm, I have been using this speaker for a while and on many productions, so it kind of sounds, sounds right to my ears maybe. But what I like about it is that it is aggressive and it's full sounding, but it's not harsh, it's not boomy, it's just a, a very balanced tone, like from the lowest lows to the higher notes, so it always sounds, it has a nice, nice, it's a nice combination of being vocal and aggressive, if you ask me. The first thing you should do when you get a new cabinet, 2x12, 4x12, is this. You should mic every single speaker because they will all sound very different from each other. And you really wanna find out which one you wanna mic in the future. You might end up always micing the same speaker. You might end up with two or three speakers. Sometimes the differences are huge, sometimes they're not. It's just highly important that you do this because if you mic the wrong speaker even if it's a great sounding cab it might sound like shit or it might just sound wrong so in this case this is why i'm making all four speakers so in the future i would know which one i will record i have put four 57s one in front of every single speaker all in the exact same position at the edge of the dust cab i try to avoid that side where it has those glue dots there you know and um it's not super scientific, but I really try to match it so it's it's the same position, which doesn't have to be the perfect position, but it gives us gives us an impression about the character of each speaker, and usually uh, the differences between the speakers are pretty big 
Anyway, time to find out how that cab sounds and time to find out which speaker we prefer. Let's go. So, time to switch from the 2002 cab to the upper left speaker. And this is interesting. Quite a big difference if you ask me. It sounds a little darker overall, but I also hear a certain zzz sizzle in the highs. But the upper mids are less aggressive than and less direct than on, on the 2002 speaker. I'm not the biggest fan of the low end because it sounds a little resonant. And it just sounds a little indirect or a little further away compared to the 2002 speaker. Let's go back. More upper mid grind. And it just sounds a lot more direct. The low end, focus on the low end, just sounds a little resonant and boomy. It reminds me a little bit of the proximity effect of a ribbon mic. Let's go back to 2002. Tight in your face, like it just sounds a lot closer. And the low end is thick yet tight. So far, I prefer the 2002 cab. Maybe the low end uh, resonances are because the cab is not in the same place in the room. Let's move on to the next speaker. So let's go from the upper left to the upper right. <laughs> Tighter low end, much closer to the 2002. Overall more aggressive, more in your face, but with lower mids. Oh, like vocal. Vocal frequencies, also more 1K. But nice. Nice twang. Let's go back to 2002. And this sounds almost scooped now, right? Okay, 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 okay. Same presence, really nice, but the Andy Sneep, this one. Oh, way more vocal. This sounds more clean though. But this, I would say, is a matter of taste. Those are two fantastic sounding speakers. The 2002 being very tight, very clean, slightly scooped maybe. And this being more hard. Which you might like or not. Some might call it a little honky. Nice! Let's move on to the third speaker. This is the lower left one. Sounds like this. And that's not good. It's way too dark. Uh, let me have a look at the mic. Seems like this one just sounds very dark. And not good at all. I told you it's important to check out every single speaker. Just imagine you just just mic this one. 
I mean, we could try moving the mic more into the middle. Let's do that later. But like this is pretty much unusable. Have a listen, go back to the second one. Totally muffled. Anyway, let's move on to the fourth speaker, which is the speaker on the lower right. This one sounds darker again, more like the first one, but has a certain hardness that is difficult to describe. Also has the resonant low end. Again, lacking the presence that we want, low end a little too boomy, and a certain hardness somehow. I don't like that one very much. But don't get me wrong, they're all usable, except for the third one. They're all very much usable, okay? Now, this one sounds like the first one, just without the, the sizzle. The first one. You hear that? And I actually pre even prefer the first one because this is just too indirect for me. And the hardness, it's hard to describe. It's um, a lot of condenser mics have that, what I call hardness. It's not actually high frequencies or anything. It's just hard to describe, whatever. Don't like that one. So for me, there's a clear winner, and that is speaker number two, the upper right speaker. Just a more vocal, less scoop version of what I already have. And I think I will remove that speaker, maybe put it into my 2002 cab, because the upper right speaker in my 2002 cab is not that great. So that could be a great combination. Time to sum it up. So first of all, I don't think there's a general quality difference between the years 2000 and 2002, at least not in this test. What I can say is that my 2002 speaker sounds a bit brighter than all four speakers in the 2000s cab, which I think is a good thing because it just cuts through really nicely. And I know that it just easily sits right in a mix. From there on, I think the differences really depend on the single individual speaker. So there are two speakers in the 2000 cab that have a rather loose and resonant low end, one with a great low end, one that is way too dark, but the one with the great low end also has a pretty pretty dominant like mid bump around 1K or something, which I think is is also nice, but different. So my 2002 speaker sounds a bit scooped in comparison. But again, I don't think there's a real quality difference here. It depends on your taste. It depends on what you want. But again, the important part is that you really mic every speaker and that you find out how every single speaker sounds. Because if you choose the wrong one, like the lower left one in this case, you know, you're gonna ruin your sound. Um, so that is, actually more important in this case. Nolly told me that the year in between 2001 actually sounds really dark, so you never really know. It's interesting. But I think, uh, yeah, I can safely say that anything from 2000 or 2002, um, yeah, it's not difficult to make a good sounding record with any of those cabs, I guess. All right, now it's time for you to let me know which one is your favorite speaker. Or do they all sound the same? Am I right? Am I wrong? You let me know. Okay, but leave a comment, please. Okay, I really want to know that. Let me know. Um, so this was a quick and dirty and very spontaneous video because a lot of you guys asked me to show you this cabinet before I pull it apart. Next step is to, you know, uh, pull out the speakers and do some more speaker experiments. Uh, what else? I got a few more 4x12 cabs here. Um, I've got a Driftwood 4x12 with three different speakers in it. Do you want to hear that one? Could be interesting. I also have a brand new Fryette 4x12 here that I haven't tried yet with Fane speakers, custom Fane speakers. You want to hear that one? You let me know what you want to see on this channel or more Mesa tests or whatever. That's all for today. Um, 
Thanks to Nolly for providing me with this information. By the way, check out the Nolly Drum Experience course that we released together on uh, in the Cola Audio Cult Academy. Link below if you want to learn how to record drums and mix drums from Nolly. There's a link below. Uh, what else? Uh, right now, we're also mixing the black metal band Canon Fieber inside the cult. Uh, for $19, you can get the multitracks or you become a member and you get all our courses. So uh, enough advertising. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I see you in hell, my friends. See you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.